The conversation continues at LarsLarson.com. Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. Glad to get your phone calls and your emails. Send those emails to talk at LarsLarson.com. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at Lars Larson Show and on Facebook at The Lars Larson Show. I've been telling you about the unanimous decision by the U.S. Supreme Court to uphold the temporary travel restriction on uh, several countries, six of them in the Middle East. Byron Henry joins me now, who's an attorney and a constitutional scholar. So... Did the Supreme Court's decision today, Mr. Henry, did it vindicate Donald Trump by reinstating that travel restriction? It sure did, almost almost across the board. And what's interesting is the very narrow part of the injunction that they uh, left in place, uh, basically uh, staying the travel ban, only applied to those with connections to the United States, such as students that have been admitted to school, or uh, over here, people with jobs or people with family members. And interestingly, that are classes of people that in the second executive order, President Trump had uh, assumed or or anticipated that those people might be eligible to uh, have some sort of standing to, to challenge the order. So he actually provided, his administration provided a waiver provision for these individuals. So these aren't the individuals that, that the Trump administration were concerned about when they actually entered the executive order in the first place. So as for the people that President Trump was attempting to keep out of the country while they're re- re- reviewing their vetting procedures, those individuals will remain uh, banned from entering the country for at least 90 days while they could do their internal review of the regulations and vetting procedures. So and, it's almost uh, a complete vindication of the Trump administration's policy. And by the way, Mr. Henry, you know, we're all on the on the watch for fake news these days. I was going to tell you that about 30 minutes ago, the lead item on the Associated Press, which is the wire service that goes into virtually every newsroom in America, their lead story is about a Muslim imam from Hawaii who's wondering to the reporters, will my mom be able to come here to celebrate Eid? And I thought, hold on a second. Your mom is covered under that part of the order that says that because you have a you have family here, you have a personal connection here with people who are sponsoring your travel, in effect, of course there's not going to be a problem. But a lot of Americans will go home tonight. They'll be listening on the radio or they'll wake up tomorrow morning to a story that talks about this you know, poor, sad story about how this imam may not be able to have the visit from his dear mother uh, you know, during Eid. And you think, hold on, that's one of the specifically excluded cases. Uh, that's not going to be covered at all. But the reporters are happy to shovel that out so Americans can say, well, it still sounds unfair because this guy can't bring his mom over here to celebrate a religious holiday. Well, what a bunch of hogwash. Of course. And, and what they won't report on are the fact that three district judges, 10 appellate court judges from the Fourth Circuit and three appellate court judges from the uh, Third Circuit, which is a total of 16 federal judges in all, their reasoning that they relied on to, to, to enjoin President Trump's uh, temporary travel ban was not even mentioned in the 9-0 ruling. And that they basically got the back of the Supreme Court's hand and said, listen, this is national security. This is the president addressing foreign nationals with no connection to the United States. They didn't talk about Trump's tweets. They didn't talk about the Establishment Clause or religious animus. They didn't talk about the president exceeding his authority. They basically said, these these injunctions will be overbroad, and all we're going to do is allow specific uh, parties that have direct connections to the United States, which is not what the executive orders were about in the first place because of the waiver provision we talked about. Uh, and, and, of course, a lot of people are reporting on the rest of the uh, ruling in and basically affirmed the president's stance that he could lower the number to 50,000 refugees when the Ninth Circuit said he didn't have the authority to lower the, lower the number. So on almost every uh, box you could check for President Trump's arguments before the Supreme Court, the Trump administration won, and the lower court didn't even get a direct rebuke. The reasoning wasn't even mentioned in their opinion, basically saying we're not going to do even hardly comment on their rulings. We're going to tell you what the law is so all these courts can learn to follow it uh, with respect to the president's authority to protect national security. Mr. Henry, I appreciate you coming on. I know you've got a little bit of a tenuous connection on cell phone, but thank you very much for the time tonight.